the month of June. Of course, things did not go as planned. I have seven books to talk about with some DNFs, some new releases. So you don't know what's coming. Just get yourself a beverage and let's talk about it. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Nakia. Welcome to my channel. As I said in the intro, this was a very interesting month, but how many of my months aren't interesting? It was my birthday month, so I thought I picked all books that I was gonna just love, love, love. Four and five star predictions, of course. And uh, like I said, things didn't go the way I expected. I have some switcheroos as usual, things you don't know that are coming. I threw in some new releases. So without further ado, let's just, let's just get into it. All right, first up, we have a high fantasy book. I believe it's urban fantasy, but a book that so many of you were waiting to hear my opinion on, and I know so many of you love, and I'm speaking of Jade City by Fonda Lee. Now, <laughs> <laughs> what happened was, um, this was a bit too complicated for me. Now, let me say, let me say, I am terrible with names terrible in real life and in fiction clearly with movies like I just don't do well with like military movies where they're calling everybody by their last name mafia movies where everybody has nicknames smalls and the fish and whatnot <laughs> I don't do well with those so this was very challenging the thing is People had names and then they had second names and then nicknames for those names. I started to make notes in my journal. I took plenty of notes and I was just on page like three. I had to keep going back to my notes to try to remember names and what their relationships were. I needed a whole flow chart just for that. And then you have a map in here, I believe. Um, several maps. Yeah, and uh, this is not a small book, <laughs> not by my standards. This was 495 pages. So I don't know what I thought I was doing in this month. I can't really tell you much. We have on the front, it says family is duty, magic is power, honor is everything. Like I said, I can't really tell you much because I didn't fully understand it. In this world, Jade gives people power and it's just highly valued and you have people at odds and stealing Jade from other folks and whatnot. I don't know. Like I said, I'm sorry, I don't have much to say. <laughs> I stopped this on page 19. I mean, it's technically a DNF, but for me, I just threw in the towel. I just was like, this is too complicated for me. I was writing all these notes. I felt like I was back in school. It was just too much. I was like, I don't wanna have to do this through the whole book. I should be able to enjoy it. So I'm sorry to disappoint you all, but I just realized, hey, I'm learning. I'm experimenting with these fantasy books. I don't know what I like and what I don't like. And I realized this is not my kind. Like I said, it was just too much. I need something a little more simplified. So if you have a recommendation, I was intrigued by the martial arts that was supposed to be in this and the, like I said, the war and the fighting and all that stuff. And it didn't seem like it was going to be too graphic and disturbing. But like I said, it just was too complicated. So if you have any recommendations, middle grade or otherwise, let me know in the comments below. But uh, for this one, sorry, it's a, it just didn't work for me. <laughs> Next, we have Fall of the House of Crane by Cindy Winget. Winget, not sure how to say it. This one I had on my Kindle. I believe it was available on Kindle Unlimited. And this one is on hold. I'm not gonna call this a DNF. What had happened was, in case you don't know, this is a mashup. It's supposed to be of The Haunting of Hill House and some Edgar Allan Poe stuff. Now, I am not familiar with Edgar Allan Poe, so I don't know if I got to any of that. I stopped at page 58, chapter eight. So at that point, I didn't recognize any Edgar Allan Poe, but again, I'm not familiar with him like that. I've seen some short horror film things that are based on his stories, but again, I don't know enough to know if I come across it or not. <laughs> but what I do know is this was very much a retelling of Haunting of Hill House, like to the T, to the number. It was just too much of the Haunting of Hill House all over again. And if you don't know, you're new here. I was not that big of a fan of The Haunting of Hill House. It was just okay for me. I did enjoy the writing of Shirley Jackson, but I did not find it scary at all. It was kind of boring. And this one, I mean, it was not boring because the chapters were shorter. It didn't move faster, but 
I just was like, I don't want to read this story again right now. I just read it last year and it's too soon. I didn't love it that much to go sit through it all over again. And I mean, if you don't know, this is a story about this Dr. Montague fellow who's a professor or something like that. He invites some people to come with him to Hill House to see if it's haunted. And I mean, all the character names were the same, Eleanor, and I forgot the other lady's name, but it was all the same character names. Everything happened in the same order. It was just pretty much the exact same to me, except like I said, the writing was a little bit easier to follow and it just moved a little bit faster. But again, I had enough with Hill House from last year. I didn't want to read it again. I thought it was going to be a little bit different, more so than what I got. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to come back to this maybe next year or something when Haunting of Hill House is not still fresh in my mind and I miss it or something. But yeah, for now, I'm going to put this on pause. She has another book that I'm looking forward to reading that's, um, I feel like that one's like Dracula and Frankenstein or something like that. I don't remember. But either way, I'm looking more forward to that one because I'm not as familiar with that. But this one, I've had enough Haunting of Hill House for now. So we're going to move on. <laughs> now, this next one came because as you see, I had some DNFs and this rarely happens to me, but I was so excited about this book that I purchased it the day it came out. It was in my last most recent anticipated books for the rest of the year video. And like I said, I jumped on this book because the premise just sounded so intriguing. It had so much promise. But you know, if it's at the beginning of this video, it did not go well. <laughs> and I'm speaking of Go Hunt Me by Kelly DeVos. I hope that's how you say her name. I will say this taught me that I think I am done with YA because that was my problem with this book. I'm gonna tell you right now. I DNF'd it at chapter four. Um, I had it on my Kindle. I returned it and got my damn money back. <laughs> Cause I just was like, oh no. So I don't have it on my Kindle anymore to know what page that was. But like I said, I got to chapter four and um, I have some quotes and things that I saved on my phone. But yeah, I just, oh. So what intrigued me was, this was supposed to be a story about a group of students who are going to Dracula's castle to film a short film. And then when they get there, they start dying off one by one. And we are supposed to believe, or by the synopsis, that it's Dracula that's doing this. So like I said, I was so excited about this book because of the whole film in a short film and then the castle, you know, the atmosphere I thought I was gonna get. Like I said, this was too YA for me. Just no. I also had the audiobook and that didn't help either. I did not like the audiobook narrator. I didn't like her voice. I didn't like the way she did the guy's voice. She did that typical like, yeah, so we're gonna go over here. Like just, I don't like when I hear guys do the opposite. I've had um, audiobooks where guys are like, yeah, and where are we? Don't do that. All you gotta do is bring your voice down a little bit or bring it up a little bit. Don't exaggerate too much. It just makes, it takes me out of it. It makes me laugh. Anyway, I put down all the kids were annoying. And I realized when I started reading the book, they were in high school. I don't know why I thought they were in college, but they were in high school. They were supposed to be like in their senior year. So again, they all annoyed me. I'm sure I'd be annoyed with 17 year olds if I was in high school now. So <laughs> they were annoying. They were talking about dating and ship names and then the way people dress and their hair and stuff that I don't care about. And it was just taking so, too long. I was like, when are we getting to the castle? Where's the trip part coming? Because this, all this yapping and talking about shooting the film and who likes who I don't care about and I didn't sign up for. So I'm learning from watching other people's videos and people talking about YA books that that is what YA is about, which is why I said, I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, so I felt too damn old for this book and it was not giving me any atmosphere in the very beginning because like I said, it started off with them working on some of the short film at a house. And I think it was supposed to be near Halloween, but it was like uh, chapter one was like at this location. And then chapter two was like at this location. And none of this was the castle part. And I flipped forward just to see how long it was gonna take them to get to the castle. And I think it was gonna be like almost halfway and I just couldn't deal with them enough for that. So here's a little taste of the things that just did not work for me. There was the romance, the, the stuff that just drives me bonkers. The main girl who we're following, don't remember her name, but she liked this boy named Jax, which that name alone. And one of the things she said was, uh, even though we had been dating since junior year, my stomach did a little flip flop every time I saw Jax. That night, he was actually wearing a pair of white jeans and a half untucked black polo shirt and loafers. This should have looked too goody goody and too clean cut and too much like a Ralph Lauren ad. 
but it worked for him. He hadn't gotten his hair cut in a while and he probably hadn't even bothered to comb it after swimming, but that too was working. Work? What? <laughs> okay. Then there's another part where he touched her and she says, my skin sizzled under his touch. I hated that my hormones kept trying to overpower my brain. Your brain is clearly already not working right because of the things you're saying out your mouth. I was getting so irritated, but I was just like, okay, hopefully this won't go on for long. Then there were things that I just was not, there was also the language that again, the way the young folks talk these days, it just gets under my skin a bit. Things like Hazel was so super freaking literal that she put Dracula in quotes. Like obviously Reagan, my best friend since first grade, wasn't the actual Dracula. But Hazel had taken the time to note that fact on the whiteboard. Look, this probably works for the YA audience or those of you who love YA. For me, I, you know the stuff that I love, my favorite books, things like this. I like smart writing. Adults that are the main characters and that, like I said, are lawyers and things like that and scientists and this just, no. I don't want to be back in high school. I don't want to hear kids talking like this. So, mm-mm. Then there was, like I said, some things that I was just like, what is the author trying to say? Why is this in here? There was a part where they were talking about using a steak as a prop. And one of them says, the steak is an entire trope that's all about silencing women. What? I just wanted a creepy vampire story. I don't want your thoughts and ideas that are coming from the author clearly, because why would these kids be... Okay. And there was another one where then they thought about using a golf tee as a weapon. And a character says, a golf tee, it can be sharp and wooden. Jax shrugged and didn't acknowledge any of my points. The symbol of the white man's game of privilege. But as a weapon though? So, as I said, DNF. I could not deal with these characters. I could not deal with the writing. I just... It wasn't giving me any atmosphere. I was getting nothing but annoyed. So unfortunately, did not work for me. I looked at other reviews on Goodreads and other people said the same thing. You can go check it out for yourself. But I was so disappointed by this book. God damn it. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, this next one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this next one has officially probably taken an author off of my favorites list. You could probably guess who it is. He got one more chance, but I'm not optimistic. But I'm speaking of The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Um, yeah. Okay. This one is about a young lady named Emma who was at a summer camp when she was a teenager. And three girls that she was sharing a cabin with went missing. Never to be heard from, seen again. And it's been bothering her for all these years. She has not been able to let it go. And the camp closed and everything because people believe something terrible happened to them, that they were murdered and we just never found the bodies. So later on, Emma as an adult is working as an artist and she's at a gallery. And the woman who owned the camp, Franny, comes up to her at this gallery and she tells her that she's going to reopen the camp, it's called Nightingale, and that she wants her to come back as a counselor to teach art painting to the kids and she's reluctant she's like I don't want to go back there but then she decides I do want to go back because I need to figure out what happened to those girls so the only way you know if she's there she can start to retrace steps be a detective figure out what happened so that's where we are now this is typical Riley Sager where we have two timelines we go in between the present where she's back at the camp like I said as an adult as a counselor so then we also go back to 15 years ago to where she was a teenager at the camp and we're starting to slowly get what happened along the way we got the two timelines I also did the audiobook which I rather enjoyed the lady I love the way she narrated Franny because Franny is an older posh woman and so the way she uh did her voice i really enjoyed that the rest was fine the way she did emma and everybody else was fine so i did enjoy listening to the audiobook while i was reading the book now let's start with the good things <laughs> as i said i enjoyed the two timelines going back and forth i was in suspense because that was the main reason i got through this book i did get to a point where i wanted to dnf and we're gonna get to that in a minute the two timelines like i said kept me intrigued kept me wanting to know more because it was like we'd leave off on something in the present and then go back to the past and you're like well what is it was just so much keeping me on the edge of my seat. I liked that the chapters were short. That's what you usually want with a thriller book because again, it makes you just wanna keep flipping pages to figure out what's gonna happen next. And um, I did mostly enjoy Riley Sager's writing. Like I said, it kept me fascinated and entertained. It reminded me of Survive the Night where I was still entertained enough to keep going. But I had major issues with this book. This is spoiler free, but 
I did not know that Emma, when she was at the camp, when she was a teenager, was only 13. Now, that would not be an issue if there were not things in this book that dealt with sexuality and the female's reproductive organs and things like that that I just don't understand why this grown man was writing about. Now, like I said, not giving away any spoilers or anything, but the girls that she was staying in the cabin with are older than her because basically what happened was she got there late and they didn't know where to put her. You're supposed to be with kids your age, but they ended up putting her with these older girls because they didn't have anywhere else for her to go. And she ends up with these basically Mean Girls. The main ringleader is named Vivian. Couldn't stand her, she got on my damn nerves. And then Emma ends up having a crush on this boy, Theo. He's 19. There was just things that I did not like that were in this book between a 13 and a 19 year old that I just did not feel was okay and I was bothered by. At first, it didn't bother me because we've all had crushes on somebody older, still do, you know? <laughs> You can't help it if you think somebody older is attractive. But then there was a moment in this book where he went into detail about Emma, 13 year old Emma, getting her period for the first time. Now, after I got through the whole book, I went back to my thoughts and realized there was no damn reason for him to write about her getting her period. There was no reason. And then the way Vivian talked to her about it, it was very crass. And also the way he wrote it, just, it was not, true to what I know of. I just didn't feel like that is how a 13 year old would handle it. I didn't feel like that was the way a older girl would handle it and talk to her about it. It just was not, I didn't like it. Like I said, when I got to those parts, I was ready to DNF. For those of you who love this book, I'm, I, I really was like, do they not get that this stuff is not okay? Like, hey, you love this book, that's good for you. I just did not like that part of it. I really, really didn't. And when I got to the twist of the book, I was just like, the twist. I could have thrown this book across the room. I got through this book because I just had to know what happened to them three girls. And like I said, when I got to the end, I was just like, are you kidding me? That was it. That was it. All I'm gonna say, keeping it spoiler free, the person responsible I could give to about. I was just like, I sat through this whole book for it to be this person that I don't care about. I didn't care that they did it, didn't do it. I really didn't care. But also, I got some receipts. Let me tell you about some of the things that, like I said, really bothered me about this book. Emma is sitting at the table with another young lady and she holds out a french fry to her to ask her if she wants it. The young lady's name is Mindy. Mindy stares at it with thinly veiled repulsion. I suspect she hasn't consumed a trans fat since junior high. I just don't like that we're focusing on diet and, and weight and all that kind of stuff. Teens don't need to be thinking about that. Nobody does, but definitely not teens. And yeah, I just, I can't stand when I come across that in YA books. Drives me bonkers. Then this is when we get someone's journal entry who's a part of the story. And she's talking about another girl who stood up to her. Cause like I said, we did have some mean girls in this book. And she says, she stood up to me last night, which took major ovaries. I was duly impressed. What teenage girl is saying it took major ovaries? Hey, maybe that's how you talked when you were a teenager. I did not. And I still don't speak like that as an adult. <laughs> yes, my daughter just said that she talked. I don't talk like that as an adult. So I was just like, where is Riley Sager getting this stuff from? Where is he getting his research? Cause I don't know any teen girls who are talking like that. It's like major ovaries. Okay. Then, like I said, we get to where I was bothered by this 13 year old girl and the 19 year old boy. That was a major part of the story and I just didn't like it as a mom and as someone who, you know, of course I was 13, but just mainly as a mom, I would not want a 19 year old boy looking at my 13 year old child. So just, I just didn't like it. But then the way he wrote it also just, so this is a part where another young lady is talking about how good Theo looks. My God, he's looking fine. Don't get me wrong. He's always looked fine, but I'm talking fine in all caps. Worthy even of a dozen lame exclamation points. And then he put like 50 exclamation points. Okay. There was a point where he had this 13 year old girl say that she felt warm all over, including between her legs. And I was like, okay, mm-mm. Mm -mm. This is not being written by a 13 year old girl. It's being written by a grown man. Why are you thinking about a 13 year old girl's, again, her period between her legs? I just didn't like it. It just didn't sit well with me. I didn't like it. 
Each time I did glance his way, I pictured him in the latrine shower, glistening and beautiful and oblivious to my prying gaze. The image brought a shameful warmth. Oh, here we go. This is it. The image brought a shameful warmth to my face, my stomach, between my legs. Mm-mm. 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 Yeah, so, <laughs> like I said, I got through this but barely and i am at two stars as of right now if i change it i'll put it here on the screen this would have been a dnf if i just didn't really want to know what happened to them three girls and like i said by the time i got to the end i was like i sat through this for nothing this is just not no i'm sorry so as i said i do not have riley sager on my favorite authors list anymore i plan to do a ranking video next month after i read the house across the lake which I'm not looking forward to, but <laughs> I'm still going to do it. So you can look forward to that soon. But like I said, after House Across the Lake, I don't think I'm going to be running to read his books anymore. I will probably wait and hear if there's like some chatter in the streets about something being really good. But otherwise, he's not going to be an auto buy. I got to read as soon as it comes out because mm -mm. we're done here, Riley Sager. I also have a book that I am still reading because I don't know why I did this to myself. I tried to save the book that I was most looking forward to for my birthday week. And that was a mistake because it was a busy birthday week and I really didn't get time to read this book. So I'm going to continue it into July, mostly by audiobook because I just love the audiobook narrator and I've said this a thousand times. So you already know I'm talking about Hell Divers. This is book three. <laughs> this is book three, Deliverance. Thank you. And yeah, I can't say too much because it continues from where we left off in book one. And I feel like I've talked about this book enough. I talked about it in the TBR, so you can go check that out. But yeah, I am still reading this. So look for a wrap up about this later, because like I said, I'm going to continue with the audiobook. All right, then you know me. When I have a lot of DNFs, then I start combing through my Kindle, looking for things I can throw in, usually novellas because they're shorter and I don't have to worry about throwing off my other weeks ahead. I think because of Jade City and I didn't read that and I had the horror books that didn't go well, I was just looking for something with a little more action, grit. <laughs> so I found this novella by a man named David Baldacci and it is called No Time Left. Now this one, I can't say much because it's only 15 pages, but I gave this four stars. And this is about a man named Frank who is an assassin. And we join him when he is on a mission. He's on an assignment. He is there to kill this person. I will say I enjoyed that scene. And then we go with him where he's going to meet with someone else who has hired him to do a job for him. And that is where the story takes him interesting turn. Now, like I said, I'm just thinking I signed up for a book about an assassin. They don't really give you much in the synopsis either, so I'm not going to give you much here. I will say that when it takes a turn, not only does it take a turn plot-wise, it takes a turn genre-wise as well. So he goes to meet with this old man who, like I said, hires him to do a job. And the man tells him that I'm going to give you the address on a piece of paper. You're going to go kill this woman. He don't ask no questions. He don't need to know nothing. He's just going to go do what he has to do. And then when he leaves this man's house, things end up, like I said, going in a different direction. That's all I can say. I enjoyed the twist. I had the audiobook for this too, because I bought this on my Kindle, I believe. And it was like a dollar or two or whatever. And the audiobook was like a dollar, something like that. I'll link it below. You want to read it yourself. I recommend it. It moved pretty fast. Like I said, I enjoyed the audiobook narrator because of the way he narrated the older man's voice and the voice he gave to the main character, Frank. But like I said, the twist, it came. And what happened at the end, it was another one of those like, <gasps> You see it coming right before it happens, but it still is like, oh, it reminded me of the twist that came around with Hannah Beast. So if you've read that, you would know. But yeah, I recommend it. Like I said, four stars. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to look to see what else I can read by this author, because like I said, I enjoyed his writing. So we're on the good notes now. On to the good things. <laughs> Now we are on to my favorite book of the month. This one, after I DNF Jade City, I was just looking for something else. And I went to see what else was at my library that was on my list. And I was surprised this was there because this is a newer release. But I was excited because I was like, you know what? I'm going to read it. What really sealed the deal for me was I listened to an audiobook sample of this book and they have some sound effects. So I was like, oh, I am in. It's sci-fi and we got some sound effects too, like the radio sound. <laughs> so I picked it up. And as I said, 
favorite book that I read this month, Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton. Now, I was worried about this book because I was hearing mixed reviews. I was hearing more positive, but I was still a little concerned. This is a sci-fi book that has lots of humor. So if you don't like that, it's not your thing. There is a quote on the back that says, Andy Weir, watch out. I would agree. That's what this reminded me of. Andy Weir type of writing, except to me, not as much science, but there is still some science. Be warned. We are following a man named Mickey Barnes who signs up to be an expendable on this mission, on this ship. They're going to discover a new place, a new planet, because of course, this is a dystopian future where things are different. Some planets are not inhabitable, all that kind of thing. Now, what an expendable means is that basically you are signing up to be the guinea pig to go on missions that are dangerous. It's like what a robot would do in space and stuff, but except they can't just keep having this technology and stuff to keep creating robots and AI to go do these things. So they need human volunteers and Mickey signs up and basically anytime he dies, they create a clone of him. He downloads his memories and things into a system so that the next clone basically picks up where he left off. And he is the reiteration number seven. Now this is not a spoiler, it's in the synopsis, but in the very beginning of the story, Mickey Seven goes on a mission. He ends up in danger and he radios in and the people that are with him think he dies. So they go ahead and clone, create Mickey Eight. But Mickey Seven did not die. So when he gets back to the ship, he sees Mickey Eight and they're like, oh, crap, you're not supposed to have multiples in this world. So they have to try to keep it a secret and basically swap and you know, hopefully people don't find out because they both could be in serious trouble. Now, when I got to that part of the story, I was kind of like, why should I care if you, you know, die or don't die? It's the very beginning of the story, I barely get to know you. But Edward Ashton did a good job with keeping you intrigued with the story, at least for me, because then we get flashbacks of what happened to Mickey Barnes beforehand and we find out why he signed up to be an expendable, how he ended up in this situation. So of course you end up caring more about him. And then some other things come in, some situations and obstacles and there's, you know, girlfriends involved and things like that. There's also danger out in this planet that they're on. There are creatures that are very dangerous. And one of the things is that Mickey, when he gets left behind, they think he's dead. He has an encounter with these creatures. So he has some things he knows that could help out humanity, but uh, you know, he's keeping that close to the vest. This also definitely has some commentary, some things that will make you think because it starts to talk about like people have this term called natalist because they don't like these expendables. They feel like they're an abomination. It's not natural. And then Mickey starts to question, you know, is he a human? Is he like a ghost? Does he actually exist because he keeps being recreated? And so like I said, there's a lot of things that make you think about your own existence and stuff like that, which you know I love. I've said this before. And we had a character named Marshall. I believe he was the captain or something like that, but he was like in charge of the ship. He cracked me up. He was the grumpy, did not like Mickey. Like I said, he was one of the natalists. He just had an issue with him. And the way the narrator did his voice and the things that he said out of his mouth, I just thought he was so funny. I loved him. He was probably my favorite character, which I shouldn't have liked him, but he cracked me up. I loved him. Now, this is one, when I started it, I was like, ah, 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 five stars, five stars. And as I was going along, I was like, oh, I'm just loving this book. Around the midway point, it did slow down a little bit for me. And then I did get to some chapters that were more heavily science-based. And it was a lot of information. And I was just kind of like, okay, I don't really care. When I say information, it was just like background on the planets or like some scientists who came up with this whole cloning thing. And I just was kind of like, oh, okay, you're kind of losing me here. But then we'd come back to the present and then I was back in the story. I love these dystopian novels, but one thing that I always cringe at or I, I'm always bothered by is the way they regard animals and the way they think that you have to consume certain things and the animals they eat and stuff like that. I don't eat animals, so that already bothers me normally. But in these type of situations, like I said, the things they will do and what they will eat, it just always bothers me and disgusts me, but I still overall enjoy the stories. So <laughs> depends on how far they go. In this one, there were some things that bothered me, so that also brought it down from a five Mm. I will say Mickey seven and Mickey eight, like I said, they end up in some situations, they end up in trouble. And then when we get to a situation that brings them some trouble, what had happened was just very odd. It was a very odd choice that the author made. And I was kind of scratching my head like, why did we have to go there? It was a little <laughs> kinky. 
<laughs> let's just say that. But it didn't go into too many details. So I was fine with it, but I was still just like, uh, okay, this is weird. But like I said, it, it took a turn from that point on. So I was still along for the ride. I was like, I don't know where we going here, but I'm, I'm, I'm along for the ride. And then the ending was kind of like, okay, but I do know there's a book too. And because I enjoyed Mickey so much, I am going to read it because I want to know what else is going to happen with him. And I enjoyed the story and the writing and the audio book. So I am going to continue. And so when I finished this book initially, I was like, um, it's about a three, three and a half because of some of the things that I had issues with. But then as I was reading other books throughout the month, I still just kept thinking about this book and I would look at it in my basket and I would just smile. I love the cover. And I was just like, you know what? No, this is four stars. Like I said, one of my favorite books of the year. Definitely my favorite book of the month. I just really enjoyed it. This is my kind of sci-fi. I loved Mickey and being in this world. And I can't wait for book two that's coming out, I think in 2023, I think. Don't hold me to it. But anyway, yeah, so let's wrap this up. <laughs> Okay, so let's stack them up. Here are most of the books that I read this month. Whoa, it's Big Beast. Let's put that at the bottom. All right. So like I said, this is four of the seven. The other three were on my Kindle and uh, it was a good month overall. I will say for my birthday month, I'm pretty sure it went better than it did last year. I don't know. I'll probably have to go look back at it when I go to edit this, but I'm pretty sure it went better. For me to have loved Mickey Seven made it worth the whole month. And even though I complained about the last time I lied, it still was entertaining and I enjoyed the audiobook and just, I will have fond memories of rolling my eyes and talking back and talking to my daughter about this book and complaining about it. <laughs> So it was still fun. And I really enjoyed my novella, No Time Left. So like I said, overall to have two four star reads and uh, some things to talk about, it was a good month. And like I said, I am enjoying my Hell Divers book three. So it's still continuing and I'm looking forward to July and hopefully it will also be a good month and I get a five star read in there somewhere. So that wraps up my June reads, my birthday month. I had a good birthday, had a good reading month, as I said. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations for some fantasy books that have that like martial arts, grit, fighting, that kind of thing with some magic in there too, but that's easier to digest than Jade City. And uh, you can also let me know your thoughts on Riley Sager, how you feel about him. If you liked Last Time I Lied, I already know some of you love it. And one of my subscribers, you did mention to me that there were issues you had with the kids in this book, and I completely agree. So let's talk about it in the comments. And if you don't have a comment and you just want to show me that you made it this far in the video and or just you want to give me some love, you can leave me some kind of space emoji for Mickey Seven, favorite book of the month. Ways you can support my channel are always linked below. And that wraps it up. So until next time, snuggle up in your hideaway with a good book like Mickey Seven. <laughs> Unplug as much as possible. Be kind to all kind. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.